Last year, GDP grew by 2.2 per cent. The OBR now forecasts it will grow by 2 per cent this year, then 2.2 then per cent again in 2017, and then 2.1 per cent in each of the three years after that. Over the next few months, this country is going to debate the merits of leaving or remaining in the European Union. And I have many colleagues who I respect greatly on both sides of the argument. The OBR correctly stay out of the political debate and they do not assess the long-term costs and benefits of EU membership. But they do say this, and I quote them directly. A vote to leave in the forthcoming referendum could usher in an extended period of uncertainty regarding the precise terms of the UK's future relationship with the EU. So I am asking my right honourable friends, the Chief Secretary and the Paymaster General to undertake a further drive for efficiency and value for money. The aim is to save a further £3.5 billion in the year 2019-20. At less than half a percent of government spending in four years' time, that is more than achievable while maintaining the protections we have set out. Public sector organisations will have a new duty to ensure that those working for them pay the correct tax, rather than giving a tax advantage to those who choose to contract their work through personal service companies. Loans to participators will be taxed at 32.5 per cent to prevent tax avoidance, and will tighten rules around the use of termination payments. Termination payments over £30,000 are already subject to income tax. From 2018, they will also attract employer national insurance. So from April next year, we will restrict interest deductibility for the largest companies at 30% of UK earnings, while making sure firms whose activities justify higher borrowing are protected with a group ratio rule. Next, we're setting new hybrid mismatch rules to stop the complex structures that allow some multinationals to avoid paying any tax anywhere or to deduct the same expenses in more than one country. Then we're going to strengthen our withholding tax on the royalty payments that allow some firms to shift money to tax havens. And lastly, we're going to modernise the way we treat losses. We're going to allow firms to use losses more flexibly in a way that will help over 70,000 mostly British companies. But with these new flexibilities in place, we'll do what other countries do and restrict the maximum amount of profits that can be offset using past losses to 50%. Corporation tax was 28% at the start of the last Parliament, and we reduced it so that it's 20% at the start of this one. Yep. Last summer, I set out a plan to cut it to 18% in the coming years. Today, I'm going further. By April 2020, it will fall to 17%. Yeah. Yeah. The new threshold yeah. for small business rate relief will raise from £6,000 to a maximum threshold of £15,000. And I'm also going to raise the threshold for the higher rate from £18,000 to £51,000. Let me explain to the House what this means. From April next year, 600,000 small businesses will pay no business rates at all. I am today cutting in half the supplementary charge on oil and gas from 20% to 10%, and I'm effectively abolishing petroleum revenue tax too. Backing this key Scottish industry and supporting jobs right across Britain. We've agreed a single powerful East Anglia combined authority headed up by an elected mayor and almost a billion pounds of new investment. We've also agreed a new West of England mayoral authority, and they too will see almost a billion pounds invested locally. And the authorities of Greater Lincolnshire will have new powers, new funding, and a new mayor. North, south, east, and west, the devolution revolution is taking hold. And because under this government we're not prepared to let people be left behind, I'm also announcing a major new package of support worth over £115 million to support those who are homeless and to reduce rough sleeping. So we're giving the green light to High Speed 3 between Manchester and Leeds. We're finding new money to create a four-lane M62, and we'll develop the case for a new tunnel road from Manchester to Sheffield. My honourable friends for Carlisle, Penrith and Hexham have told us not to neglect the North Pennines, so we'll upgrade the A66 and the A69 too. I said we would build the Northern Powerhouse. We put in place the mayors, we're building the roads, we're laying the track, we're making the Northern Powerhouse a reality and rebalancing our country. The government that is delivering Crossrail 1 
will now commission Crossrail 2. Yeah. I know this commitment to Crossrail 2 will be warmly welcomed by the Leader of the Opposition, the Right Honourable Member for Islington. It could have been designed just for him, because it's good for all those who live in North London and are heading south. First, I can announce that we're going to complete the task of setting schools free from local education bureaucracy, and we're going to do it in this Parliament. I am today providing extra funding so that by 2020, every primary and secondary school in England will be or will be in the process of becoming an academy. Second, we're going to focus on the performance of schools in the north, where results have not been as strong as we'd like. London's school system has been turned around. We can do the same in the northern powers. So today, I can announce that we will introduce a new sugar levy on the soft drinks industry. And let me explain how it will work. It will be levied on the companies. It will be introduced in two years' time to give companies plenty of space to change their product mix. It will be assessed on the volume of the sugar-sweetened drinks they produce or import. There will be two bans, one for total sugar content above 5 grams per 100 millilitres, a second higher band for the most sugary drinks with more than 8 grams per 100 millilitres, I know that fuel costs still make up a significant part of household budgets and weigh heavily on small firms. Families paid the cost when oil prices rocketed. They shouldn't be penalised when oil prices fall. We are the party for working people, so I can announce that fuel duty will be frozen for the sixth year in a row. Tobacco duty will continue to rise, as set out in previous budgets, by 2% above inflation from 6pm tonight, while hand-rolling tobacco will rise by an additional 3%. And to continue our drive to improve public health, we will reform our tobacco regime to introduce an effective floor on the price of cigarettes and consult on increased sanctions for fraud. The headline rate of capital gains tax currently stands at 28%. Today, I am cutting it to 20%. And I am cutting the capital gains tax paid by basic rate taxpayers from 18% to just 10%. From April 2017, anyone under the age of 40 will be able to open a lifetime ISA and save up to £4,000 each year. And for every £4 you save, the government will give you £1. So put in £4,000 and the government will give you £1,000 every year until you're 50. You don't have to choose between saving for your first home or saving for your retirement. With the new lifetime ISA, the government is giving you money to do both. From April next year, I am raising the tax-free personal allowance to £11,500. That's a tax cut for 31 million people. It means a typical basic rate taxpayer will be paying over £1,000 less income tax than when we came into government five years ago. And it means another £1.3 million of the lowest is pay taken out of tax altogether, social justice delivered by Conservative means. From April next year, I am raising the tax-free personal allowance to £11,500. That's a tax cut for 31 million people. It means a typical basic rate taxpayer will be paying over £1,000 less income tax than when we came into government five years ago. And it means another £1.3 million of the lowest pay taken out of tax altogether. Social justice delivered by Conservative means. Mr Deputy Speaker, we made another commitment in our manifesto, and that was to increase the threshold at which people pay the higher rate of tax. That threshold stands at £42,385 today. I can tell the House that from April next year, I'm going to increase the higher rate threshold to £45,000. This is a budget that gets the investors investing, savers saving, businesses doing business, so that we build for working people a low-tax, enterprise Britain, secure at home, strong in the world. I commend to the House a budget that puts the next generation first. Yeah.